All week long, we've been telling you about efforts by rich landowners to limit public access to pristine sections of California's coastline. It was looking like one more beach was about to be put out of reach. Then our reporters took a risk to show just how dangerous that could be. KPX 5's Devin Feely shows us the tide may now be turning. This is the story of how we ended up in a tiny kayak on the open ocean, a vast sea of blue north of Santa Barbara. It's got a lot to do with this breathtaking beach, a sandy, unspoiled slice of California's coast that you've probably never heard of and almost certainly, by design, have never stepped foot on. But we were carried to this point, too, on the cross currents of history and money and power and the law and its limits. Want a back battle? Not catch the wind. They're going for it. Add a bit of daring and a dash of hubris, and you have all of the makings of a grand misadventure. A lot of guys, a lot stronger than me, have been swallowed by this channel. That's Tamlorn Chase, our guide. We'll hear more from him in a bit. But first, a bit of history. It's important, and I promise to be brief. In 1972, voters concerned about overdevelopment of the coast approved Prop 20, which says the California Coastal Zone is a, quote, valuable natural resource belonging to all people. In short, the beaches belong to everyone, but only up to what's known as the mean high tide line, basically the water and wet sand. You can buy the land around the beach, but you can't deny access to that beach. You can't block the road. You can't close it off. You have to allow the public to enjoy the beach, to make it to the beach, to, to be able to recreate on the beach. It's a big week in the battle over beach access. Local officials have been locked in a years-long battle with a landowner over the access to the beaches. In Santa Cruz County, a battle over beach access. But you don't have to look far to see that the public's right of access is currently under attack typically by wealthy property owners who want to turn the public's beaches into their own private playgrounds. Which brings us back to Hollister Ranch. There's beautiful, beautiful beaches here. Um, there's wonderful surf. Um, and basically, it's a place that should be, from my point of view, something that all people should be able to enjoy. Peter Hagen, boat owner. More from him in a bit as well. Once a sprawling 15,000-acre seaside cattle ranch, Hollister has been carved up into prime beachfront property. It's also become part of the local lore, a dream destination that few are ever lucky enough to actually visit. That's because all of the land and the road leading up to the beach is private. So for 50 years, beachgoers have been turned around at the guard shack, or ticketed for trespassing, if they tried to follow the train tracks in that hugged the coast. And with the pier at nearby Gaviota State Beach closed due to storm damage for five years now and counting, anyone looking to reach the beach by boat would have to launch from the harbor in Santa Barbara, 30 plus miles and hours away. We just got a boat like less than a year ago and I keep talking to my son, hey, when are we gonna go to, you know, Hollister Ranch? He's like, oh, dad, it's such a hassle because, you know, we, you know, we gotta drive like 40 miles each way. We barely can put enough gas in our boat to do it. It's an all day affair. So the dream and the subject of a decades long legal battle has been a walking path into Hollister. But that's not what the Coastal Commission agreed to in a recent settlement with property owners. But the claims that the settlement offers a benefit for the public are highly strained. The public's rights of access are really not going to be enlarged at all. The settlement sets aside a three-quarter mile stretch of the beach at Hollister known as Corta Beach. But here's the catch. You can access it, quote, from the ocean only. Which brings us back to the kayak. There go. Fellow KPIX reporter, scratch that, my friend Kato and I paddled into a strong headwind on the first leg of our journey, not unlike the political headwinds facing opponents of the settlement at Friday's Coastal Commission meeting. And yet they came. The access is unsafe. Like a crashing wave. This agreement provides the public no relief. Or a rising tide. It's a bad deal. You shouldn't go forward. Like a gathering storm, determined to torpedo a deal they say caters to the privileged few at the public's expense. If you have enough money, if you're famous enough, if you're willing to fight it out long enough, uh, then you'll get your way. And most surprisingly, by the end of the meeting, there seemed to be a willingness to reverse course, possibly to even walk away from the deal 
altogether. I would love to see a conversation about how the Coastal Commission, at least as a party, can withdraw from this settlement. Not knowing how prepared, or perhaps how ill-prepared, we were for the three-mile paddle out to Hollister from Gaviota State Park, we hired Tam, remember him, to be our guide. The average person that I've had come on my kayak tours, generally, you know, they've been in a kayak before, um, and they're comfortable floating in a harbor, and, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I know how to kayak. But when you really get out on, you know, ocean kayaking, sea kayaking, and you have swell and you have wind and you have rocks and all these uh, combination of factors, you really have to know what you're doing. But for two 40-something everymen, one of us prone to seasickness, guilty, we did okay. Granted, our initial landing on the beach was not exactly cinematic, but we survived. People will die if they don't know what they're doing. The return trip was mercifully uneventful. We had a favorable wind at our back, but after a second and maybe a third bout of seasickness, I can't describe how happy I was to paddle under the pier at Gaviota and come ashore. It is a killer beach, but it is not worth dying for. And critics of the settlement, of which there are many, hope no one ever does. A state agency like a large ship at sea doesn't change direction readily or quickly, so charting a new course may actually be more difficult than it sounds. The commissioners would have to schedule a vote, presumably at the meeting next month. And the clock is ticking. A judge down in Santa Barbara County is scheduled to finalize the deal in early September.